Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be the commentary on Isaiah chapter 23. I think Isaiah is one of the most important books of the Bible. It is probably the most quoted book in the New Testament. And it has a great deal of prophecy in it. Some of it is not been fulfilled. It's prophecy for the end times. It foretold of the coming Messiah. And the uh, problem is, a lot of your demon nominational preachers will actually discourage you from reading the Old Testament because... It exposes their lies and their false teachings, whether it's intentional or not. So, a little bit of background. Tyre and Zidon, Zidon sometimes it's spelled with an S, sometimes with a Z, Z-I-D-O-N or S-I-D-O-N. They were... Well, Sidon originally was inhabited by the Canaanites, which I'm going to prove. And Tyre, uh, T-Y-R-E, no, not the British spelling of a, uh, a Dunlop or Firestone or Goodyear, you know, a wheel that goes on a car made of rubber. No, not that kind of tire, but the it was an island and well, Sidon too, they were trading outlets. Uh, Tyre was uh, an ocean-going uh, people. I don't know about oceans, but you know, the Mediterranean. And they, were, they got very wealthy by trading and doing trade routes. And uh, let's face it, it's real easy to move things by boat as compared to over land you know, going over mountains and what have you. But uh, they were expert traders. Now, they were associated with the Phoenicians. And the Phoenicians were associated with the tribe of Dan. And they were also associated with the Canaanites. I don't know where one starts and where one ends. But the... Uh, I think the Tyre started originally was good. King Hiram of Tyre helped King Solomon build the temple. He sent workmen. He was able to help them procure wood, I believe cedar. Uh, perhaps you've heard of the cedars of Lebanon. They were very famous. I think they've all been pretty much cut down. But uh, even the Masonic Lodge has legends and stories about Hiram. Um, I'm not saying I agree with him. I'm just pointing that out, that he, he was pretty famous. So, let's take a look. In 2 Samuel 5.11, And Hiram, king of Tyre, sent messengers to David, King David, right? Uh, sent messengers to David and cedar trees and carpenters and masons, and they built David an house. Now, they built David his personal house, I guess. Um, in 2 Samuel 24, 7, And came to the stronghold of Tyre and to all the cities of the Hivites and of the Canaanites, and they went out to the south of Judah, even to Beersheba. So I guess Sidon and Tyre originally belonged to the Canaanites, and I guess... Israel took it, but then they intermarried with them. That's what I'm thinking. So, all right. So, in 1 Kings 9, 11, Now Hiram, the king of Tyre, had furnished Solomon with cedar trees and fir trees and with gold, golding according to all his desire. Then King Solomon gave Hiram 20 cities in the land of Galilee. 
So Hiram helped Solomon build the temple. So Tyre had helped David and Solomon, but evidently, I guess they got polluted with the Canaanites. I don't know. But Psalms 83, verse 1, has this to say. A song or psalm of Asaph, Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent, and are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom, and the Ishmaelites, of Moab, and the Hagarines, Gebal, and Ammon, and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. Aser also has joined with them. They have hopen the children of Lot, Selah. So evidently all of God's enemies, including Tyre, were conspiring to get rid of Israel. So there was... A time when Tyre and Sidon, I suppose, well, Tyre, maybe not Sidon, but Tyre definitely was helping David and helping Solomon. And then I guess they went into a, intermarried with the Canaanites and went into apostasy. I don't know. But in Matthew 11, verse 19, Jesus speaking. He says, The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a man gluttonous and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of her children. Then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Woe unto thee, Chorazin! Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. Just a little bit more background and then we'll get started on Isaiah chapter 23. Let's go to Joshua chapter 13, verse 1. Now Joshua was old and stricken in years, and the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and stricken in years, and there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. This is the land that yet remaineth, all the borders of the Philistines and all Geshuri from Sihor, which is beyond Egypt, even unto the borders of Ekron northward, which is counted of the, uh, which is counted to the Canaanite, five lords of the Philistines, the Gazathrites and the Ashdothites and Eshkelonites, the Gittites and Ekronites, also the Avites. From the south, all the land of the Canaanites and Mira, which is beside the Sidonians. Okay, so they were part of the Canaanites, the Sidonians, unto Aphek, to the border of the Amorites, and the land of the Gib Giblianites, and all Lebanon, toward the sun rising from Baal Gad, unto Mount Hermon, unto the entering into Hamoth. Now, Mount Hermon is the place in the Book of Enoch, which I don't I got mixed feelings about Enoch, but uh, Mount Hermon is supposedly the place that the fallen angels made their pact with each other that they would pollute the seed line 
of mankind by interbreeding with them, thus creating the race of giants, the Philistines, you know, Goliath, David and Goliath, um, and mentioned in Genesis 6. And if you read Job 38, you can easily see that the sons of God shouted for joy at the cre foundation of the earth. And Adam didn't come until six days after the earth was created. So Adam couldn't have shouted at the foundation of the earth when he didn't even exist. Okay? So the sons of God had to be angels, especially since when you read day 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 in Genesis, the angels are not even mentioned as being created. So they had to have been created before the earth existed. And the sons of God shouted for joy at the creation of the earth. So if it couldn't be mankind, it had to be angels. And then when you read in Genesis 6, the sons of God married the daughters of men. Well, duh, you know. But uh, your churches will fight you on that tooth and nail because they want you to think that all mankind can be saved. Oh, yeah. See, King David was an evil man because instead of killing Goliath, he should have sent a preacher to him and an evangelist and, and got him saved. You know, that's the thinking of the modern church world. So, yeah. All right, so, verse 5. In the land of the Gibe uh, Giblites and all Lebanon toward the sun rising and Baal Gad unto Mount Hermon, unto their entering into Hamoth, all the inhabitants of the hill country from Lebanon unto Mishresh, Foth, Mame, and all the Sidonians, and all the Sidonians, then will I drive out from before the children of Israel, and divide thou it by lot unto the Israelites for an inheritance, as I have commanded thee. Now therefore divide this land for an inheritance unto the nine tribes and the half-tribe of Manasseh. So the Sidonians area, I guess they were originally inhabited by Canaanites, then they were inhabited by the Israelites, but uh, generally the Israelites didn't completely drive all of them out, and they entered if they entered into marriages with them, thus polluting their bloodline. So, with that in mind, let's go to Isaiah chapter twenty-three, verse one: "The burden of Tyre, how." ye ships of Tarshish. Uh, Tarshish, according to many historians, is the ancient name for what is now Spain. Howl ye ships of Tarshish, for it is laid waste, so there that there is no house, no entering in from the land of Chittim, it is revealed to them. Be still, ye inhabitants of the isle. Uh, Tyre originally was just an island. Be still, ye inhabitants of the isle, thou whom the merchants of Zidon that pass over the sea have replenished. And by great waters the seed of Sihor, the harvest of the river, is her revenue, and she is a mart of nations. Ah, she was a Walmart of nations. What do you think? Be thou ashamed, O Zidon, for the sea hath spoken, even the strength of the sea, saying, I travail not, nor bring forth children, neither do I nourish up young men, nor bring up virgins. As at the report concerning Egypt, so shall they be sorely pained at the report of Tyre. Pass ye over to Tarshish, howl, ye inhabitants of the isle. Is this your joyous city? whose antiquity is of ancient days, her own feet shall carry her afar off to sojourn. Who hath taken this counsel against Tyre, the crowning city, whose merchants are princes, whose traffickers are the honorable of the earth? 
The Lord of hosts hath purposed it to stain the pride of all glory and to bring into contempt all the honorable men of the earth. Pass through thy land as a river, O daughter of Tarshish. There is no more strength. He stretched out his hand over the sea. He shook the kingdoms. The Lord hath given a commandment against the merchant city to destroy the strongholds thereof. And he said, Thou shalt no more rejoice, O thou oppressed virgin daughter of Zion, Zidon. Arise, pass over to Chittim. There also shalt thou have no rest. Behold, the land of the Chaldeans. This people was not till the Assyrians founded it for them that dwell in the wilderness. They set up the towers thereof. They raised up the palaces thereof. And he brought it to ruin. So first you had the Assyrians and in power. And then you had the Chaldeans, which were part of the Babylonian Empire that came after them. Verse 15. And it shall come to pass in that day that Tyre shall be forgotten seventy years, according to the days of one king. After the end of seventy years shall Tyre sing as an harlot. Take an harp, go about the city, thou harlot, that thou hast been forgotten. Make sweet melody, sing many songs, that thou mayest be remembered. And it shall come to pass after the end of seventy years that the Lord shall visit Tyre, and she shall turn to her higher, and shall commit fornication with all the kingdoms of the earth upon the face of the earth. And her merchandise and her hire shall be holiness to the Lord. It shall not be treasured nor laid up, for her merchandise shall be for them that dwell before the Lord to eat sufficiently and for durable clothing. Tyre was a uh, island that was off the coast of Lebanon, not a great di distance, but she had a great navy. And when uh, Alexander, who was called the Great, came, he demanded their surrender, and they wouldn't do it. So he took, uh, from what I understand, parts of an old ruined city, whether he ruined it or not, I don't remember, but he took the stones and threw them into the water by the coast leading to the island. And that was how he built a bridge. He just kept throwing rocks in the water until he could go over on dry land. And he built a bridge going to Tyre. And then he conquered it. But, uh, you know, when they saw that the bridge was coming, they got in their ships and took off. But uh, there were some left behind. And uh, that's pretty much what happened. But because of he had built this causeway, a bridge, uh, the silt had built it up like a beach. And uh, now the island of Tyre is part of a peninsula. So, but uh, I'm not sure if that was the 70 years or not, but that's, that's the background on this chapter 23 of Isaiah. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.